And Jack Smith's response, and we can break it down a bit more as we go ahead here, but his response basically boils down to, it's a falsity. As a matter of fact, this never happened. Trump never properly designated the documents. And second of all, even if he had, it fails legally. So Jack Smith has had it, and you can sense that in this brief. Uh, he joins all the rest of us, Jack Smith. Yep. Uh, yes, I love the special counsel deploys SAS in filing on classified <laughs> documents. Oh. I love SAS. SAS about, is good. It's, about it's like time spunk, to someone, right? Yeah. It's about time someone deployed SAS. Yeah. I hate spunk, but I love SAS. Well, right. Yeah. yeah. That has. It's about time you de- someone deployed it. You're correct. Yeah. Maybe that will work. Hmm. I know who we, we can ask. Tried everything else. Yeah, I know we can ask. The master of SAS. Yes. Carl. <laughs> Carl Frisch. Let's talk to our fancy Fairfax County school board friend, shall what? we? CarlFrisch.com. Oh, hiya, Carl Frisch. Hi. Good morning. I've not been called the SAS master in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> um, yeah, this new response filed by Jack Smith in the classified documents case was made public. According to legal analysts, the special counsel is deploying creative uh, retorts in his reply to the judge. Uh, they said the um, Smith had no choice but to call out the judge for, quote, failing a law school exam and her handling of the classified information case. Smith knocked Judge Aileen Cannon for her directions for jury instructions, pointing out they are based on a fundamentally flawed legal premise. Um, and it, the uh, expert said Smith had to go on the attack. I mean, it's so egregious at this point, Carl. Uh, he says, for non-lawyers, putting some sass into a brief is not that uncommon, so it can fairly be interpreted as being directed at the other party's uh, stupid arguments. But DOJ is putting it into a proposed jury instruction, which is really taking direct aim at canon. It is unusual. Um, it, Norm Eisen said it's fu- uh, the, it, it is a fum- fundamentally flawed legal premise is a polite term for that's nuts. Uh, meaning what she's trying to put in jury instruction. By the way, before even setting a date, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it, it's... But, you know, Carl, I was saying before the break, I still have a hard time, even though we do this every day for a living, getting my mind around the fact that someone he appointed could let him get away with essentially uh, espionage, treason, whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah, well, and, you know, it's good that this is happening because I think... Um, the American people deserve to know the shenanigans that, that are at play um, and just how bad it has been throughout this process. Um, and, you know, they're creating a paper trail is what they're doing, mm-hmm. right, uh, of factual information for any kind of appeal that needs to happen. Um, but look, I think this is something that we've expected um, and they've certainly been ready for it every step of the way. So um, I'm hopeful that things will still turn out the right way. but. You know, this is what happens when, um, you know, I don't think the founders could have predicted anything like this, even though safeguards were put in place. Yeah. I don't think anybody in a million years would have said, you know, a future president is going to break the law and then some, and then he's going to rely on judges that he appointed to try and get out of it. All the way up to uh, the Supreme Court. Right. I mean, th- that's what's c- crazy. So Judge Mershon denied his motion to delay the start of the criminal trial that will, you know, in Manhattan that's starting the 15th. Um, he asked him to delay it until after the Supreme Court decides whether he's immune from prosecution for acts he committed this president. Uh, Mershon ruled that Trump's motion was untimely because it failed to meet a filing deadline. I mean, it, also, he just hires the worst lawyers and then blames, you know, everyone else, mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so anyway, well, but at I, this point, he can hardly help that he's hiring the worst lawyers because the best ones certainly won't work for him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But what you know, Carl, what we opened the show with was going. He's he now has violated this gag order again, attacking the judge and his family. Right. So and I, but I don't you know what I was saying that the legal thing I don't get is you know in the story it says judge it may be intentional. Trump may be trying to bait the judge into doing Absolutely. something that would delay the trial and so that would be my question does fining or jailing him delay the trial in some way would there be a reason the judge would go i'm just going to let this go because we're starting in a few days well i i would imagine that's probably the judge's calculus right now and yes it would delay things right because there'd be the decisions there'd be the appeals there'd be whatever you know comes out of that um and so you know, this is the kind of stuff that we're going to deal with. And I think the other part of the calculus on the Trump folks side is what political benefit they could get from their base if he is fined or jailed. 
yeah. um, for breaking this uh, yeah. gag order. Well, so and Alvin Bragg slammed Trump's demand the judge overseeing the hush money case recuse himself in a new court filing. He said that uh, he writes the daisy chain of innuendos is a far cry from evidence. There's some n- simply nothing new here. And, you know, Tristan Snell, interestingly, who successfully prosecuted um, uh, what do you call what's the which scam Trump University. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he said this is nothing new. He's he does this every time he attacks the prosecutors and the judges and whatever. It's just I don't know, Carl, because he's was president that now, you know, eh, look at how they've gone after D- Fonnie Willis. I mean, he's going to do this in every case. Right. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV. You so don't? you'll have to talk to Glenn. Well, get uh, out then. But. <laughs> But, uh, you know, what I wonder is if they can preemptively put in gag orders. I doubt it. Um, there probably has to be something happen uh, in order for that to be the case. But I have zero doubt that he will give every opportunity for them to do it. Yeah. We t- you know, I keep talking about being so struck by Judge Luddig just saying, you know, like our institutions somehow, I, you know, are just frozen or not. You know, I, I keep saying it feels Hitlery. Like, oh, I see. This is how they couldn't stop Hitler because everyone was scared and nobody would do anything. Not the judicial system, not, you know, his own party, not, the, the, you know, anything.